How do you handle getting hurt? I'm not talking about a skin knee or a cut lip. I'm talking about wounds that dig deeper than that. Someone calls you a name. Your little sister takes your skateboard and wrecks it. Your favorite coach cuts you from the team. Your parents promised you a special trip, but can't afford it now. Your so-called best friend doesn't invite you to their birthday party. You start to feel like a mess inside, murky and mad and, and hopeless. You can't stop thinking about it, about what they did to you and how they should pay. But there's only one way to shine a light in the darkness. When you forgive, you decide the other person doesn't have to pay. You choose to let God take care of it. You say, what you did to me doesn't control me. You free yourself from bitterness. You even give the other person a chance to change. But you don't have to forgive on your own. In fact, you can't. True forgiveness comes from God. He's the one who forgives us of all the wrong things we've ever done. And it's only with his help that we can truly forgive those who hurt us. Then we can say, in your love, I'm free. In your love, I'm forgiven. When you live out forgiveness, others can see God at work in you. And that's why forgiveness is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. You are above every other Your love amazes me You created every beautiful color For everyone to see I want the world to know I want my life to show Just what your love has done for me
All month long, we've been talking about forgiveness. Forgiveness is deciding that someone who has wronged you doesn't have to pay. Forgiveness can clean up some pretty bad messes, which is exactly what I've been doing around this place. So before we get this party started, I'm going to show you one last do-it-yourself hack involving my new kitchen table. My friend Chris volunteered to help me move it into the apartment, which was great of him until the incident. It was Chris's idea to turn the table sideways to get it in the door. I told him it wouldn't work, but he did it anyways and broke one of the legs. So guess what? I was right and he was wrong. Now look at my table. More level. Thanks a lot, Chris. Guess who's not getting invited to the party now? It's you, Chris. <sighs> Let's do this thing. Huh, that was pretty easy, actually. Let's check this out. Test one. Uh... Test two. Last but not least, test three. <laughs> oh man, still so waiting out. Don't think that lets you off the hook, Chris. You're still missing out on my party. Today's story is about a guy who wasn't so sure he wanted to party. My party's going to be great, by the way. We're going to have music and games and snacks. And although Chris would usually be the one to bring the snacks, plus he plays the best games and picks really good music. Ugh. If Chris isn't invited, maybe I'll be the one who misses out. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 15, verses 21 through 32. When Jesus wanted to share something important, he often told a story to explain what he meant. Now one day the religious leaders were grumbling because Jesus chose to bring in outcasts and people who did things wrong. He hangs out with sinners and even like eats with them. Jesus knew their hearts. These men thought they were better than everyone else. So he told them the story of a man and his two sons. Now the youngest son asked for his share of his father's money and he took off. He spent his money on parties and all other stuff. But then the money ran out and he ended up at a miserable job feeding pigs while he himself starved. Desperate, the young son returned home, planning on begging for mercy and working as a servant. Instead, his father welcomed him with open arms and even planned a party for his lost son in his honor. Ultimately, seemed like a happy ending. But Jesus wasn't finished with the story yet. The older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. If Jesus were to tell that story to us today, it might sound something like this. The older brother, let's call him Will. He spent the entire day working hard, perhaps plowing up the packed dirt on a brand new field. Come on, Bessie, just... <clears throat> One more row. <sighs> Gotta finish before the light goes. As the sun slipped behind the hill, Will finished breaking the dirt on his last long row. I just need some water and a quiet meal and bed. Will trudged slowly back to the house and left Bessie in the barn with a bag of oats. If my slacker brother hadn't run off, I wouldn't have to work so hard. As Will neared the house, he was surprised to see the lights blazing from every window. What is going on? Will stopped, trying to make sense of all the activity and the music. 
Then, the back door opened. One of the servants stepped outside to throw out a bowl of scrap. And she turned to go back inside. Wait. The servant paused. What's happening? It's just the party for your brother. The what for my what? You haven't heard? Your brother showed up this afternoon. Your dad had the fattest calf killed and roasted to celebrate. He is so thankful Jake's safe. A party? My dad is throwing a party? I'll let the family know you're back. What? No. No. I am not coming in. The servant wrinkled her nose. Whew. You want someone to run you a bath first? Leave me alone. The servant hurried back inside, well paced as his exhaustion vanished and anger coursed through his veins. I work all day, every day. Has dad ever thrown a party for me? Will stalked back and forth, fuming as the back door opened up again. His father hurried out. Will, here you are. Well, look at that. You decided to remember I exist. Your brother is back. He's okay. Well, that is just fantastic. We're all celebrating, but it's not complete without you. Come on inside. Will turned and looked directly at his father, eyes blazing. All these years, I've worked nonstop for you. I've done every single thing you asked, and you never even given me a goat to have a party with my friends. You never said you wanted. This son of yours runs away with your money and wastes it like a fool. Then he shows up and you roast a fatted calf and throw a giant shindig. Will's father sighed, took a deep breath, and looked Will directly in the face. My son, you are always with me. Everything I have is yours, but we had to celebrate and be glad. This brother of yours was dead for all we knew. And now he's alive again. He was lost and now he is found. <sighs> Look, I'm real tired. I plowed the entire North Field. Well, thank you. I think I'll just go to bed. Won't you come into the party? Just for a few minutes? Will hesitated. He could see the people through the window, dancing, eating, full of joy. The light and the music called them. Please, Will. We don't know if the older brother ever listened to his father. We don't know if he ever forgave his younger brother. We don't know if he chose to go and enjoy the party. But what we do know is that if he stayed outside, he missed out on many good things. The older brother in Jesus' story totally missed out. Being right was way more important to him than repairing the relationships with his father and brother. The father, on the other hand, forgave his son and threw a big party! <laughs> Forgiveness is something we should celebrate. Think about it. In the beginning, God decorated for the biggest party ever when he made paradise for his people. But over time, people got further and further and further away from paradise. So. God sent Jesus. Because of what Jesus did for us, we can be forgiven. Jesus even said that when someone turns to God, there's great joy in heaven. <laughs> Maybe like a party. When you forgive someone in your heart, that's worth celebrating. I mean, forgiveness can save relationships. It can even make someone else feel like they matter. And forgiveness can take the weight off your shoulders too. <laughs> but when you hold grudges and you don't forgive, you can miss out on all that stuff. That's why the one thing to remember today is this. When you don't forgive, you miss out. So, of course, I'm going to forgive my friend Chris for breaking my table even though I was right and he was wrong. I don't wanna miss out on our party. And I definitely don't wanna miss out on our friendship. That's way more important to me than being right. Well, that's all for now. I've gotta go get ready for a party. See you around.